PowerPoint has a clickable slide menu. You can go straight to that one, straight to this one, and you get a video playing, auto playing as it goes along, as long as you put that in the slide. Oh, <laughs> that's a close call. And then you can just go back as you run through the slides, it takes you back to this screen. So a really, really cool feature in PowerPoint 2019. Multi-speaker events is another great use case for this. For example, I can go directly to this speaker and then I can introduce them with this on the screen, run through their slides, and then when they're done, they do their Q&A with this final slide, which is just an image of the first slide, and then eventually we can go back to this. Or I can go directly to this one in any order that I want. It doesn't have to be in the order that I pre-specified. So this is a great way to have a cool experience for multi-speaker slides. My name is David Benheim and I have lots of videos on PowerPoint, Excel, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, any business technology that you use. Feel free to click the subscribe button if you want. So here I am in a blank PowerPoint slide where I've pre-prepared this. And these are just GIFs. GIFs auto play with the new version of PowerPoint, but you can upload a video or something else, or you can just have images as well, works very well. The key is making sure you have consistent slide headers. So this is my 2.2, this is my 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, 6, etc. And then I'm going to click in between these slides and I'm going to go to insert, zoom and summary zoom. Then just click on all of the relevant ones like these press insert and that has created this slide which effectively does what I need it to do. So if I go to slideshow mode, shift F5, I can click there, I can click here, whatever I want, I've effectively done the basics of it. So let me go through a little bit more of the specifics about what I've done. I have created sections of my presentation by clicking those things. And it's named them section one, two, three, four, five, and six, etc. And the section feature is a completely separate feature that from Zoom, but it actually works with the summary zoom. So you can right click and rename sections, and I can call this recap, for example. And you could do that one by one. I would definitely advise that if you're going to do this. But you can also manually add your sections by right clicking and choosing add section. Then you give it a name like this as need be. However, if I was to go to insert another summary zoom, I get the full menu again. And if I click on certain ones like this that has a title using the placeholders, it will name it best use cases because that's the name of the slide. So you can sort of shortcut there if you just give it the right slide site title. But I don't tend to do that because I like this sort of layout here. Um, notice as well that seven doesn't look great. I like six because six is good practice for how many sections you should have in your talk. And it just looks nice. It looks slick with the design. Now you can, if you want to move these around or you can just click on it and delete it. If you move them around, Clip back on zoom and choose reset layout and then everything goes back to how it could be. Now, in this zoom section, you'll notice that a lot of this is quite similar to what you get with images. In fact, if I click on an image, I get these sort of frames, the borders, the layouts, the crops, the, the align tools. With zoom, you don't get the cropping features, but you get the alignment, rotation, uh, sizing options, the border effects. Uh, I tend to like to choose a style. I do this for a lot of my images. I choose this one. It's called center shadow rectangle. It makes things pop, makes them look a little bit 3D and makes them a little bit nicer. Um, with zoom, I sometimes do them, sometimes I don't. But with images, I tend to enjoy it for sure. So one key thing is you click on one zoom and that only selects one. So uh, that doesn't do it consistently with the others. I tend to select all by pressing control A and then making sure that I'm making consistent changes throughout. Um, you have this special thing called zoom background. Like I personally don't like using it, but return to zoom uh, is quite a useful one to know about. What that means is that you see the icon change here. So if you take it off, 
then if you go through your slides like this, go back, it just does that sort of animation. But if you have it clicked on like that, then if you go through the slides in that section, it will jump back to this. Generally, I like the way it jumps back, but I don't like doing it that way. So I have a hack, which is the way that I do it. And I'll discuss that later on in this video. I will note that this slide is a normal slide, so you can add some text there. You can even just sort of draw a shape and recolor that shape and type in it with whatever you want. And then slideshow mode will just use these objects as need be, but it just has these other extra objects there. Now you can also just drag one slide into your existing slide and that becomes a picture of the other slide that's updated live and it is also a zoom. So just to show you that, if I go back here and I move things around and I change the color, that then fixes it here. And in slideshow mode, I can click on this to go back to that one. Uh, some ways that this can break. So if you delete the original slide, then this is going to show you this sort of symbol. And in the case of the section zoom, if I delete the first slide, it will show me the first slide in that section, delete the whole section, and it shows me this broken link. But also, if I undo that, but also if I copy this slide, go to a new presentation and paste the slide, the zooms will then break. This is kind of obvious because they're linked to something outside. However, what I tend to do is when I paste, I paste as a picture, and then I can make that full screen if I need to. Zoom is a way to uh, do a one sort of level, but I have a way that I tend to do a two level hierarchy. You may have noticed that I have here section one, two, three, four. All of these slides relate to section two. So what I tend to do is have um, this that I build up and then this one I will take these objects, copy them, paste them there and then I will just sort of allow this one to look like that. Take this over here. Uh, do certain things to format the object so that the text doesn't align like that is just showing here. And then maybe make it a little bit bigger. And then these are not linked yet. So slideshow mode, this is the first slide. This is the second slide. But this new trick in PowerPoint 2019, click on transitions for the second slide, go to morph and look how slick that is. So I would do this for each sort of nested section. I've got two, then I've got 2.1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. What happens if you want to rearrange things? So let's say that I want section 2.1 to go down here near the end. Notice that if you are using sections, you do get special features in PowerPoint and maybe section 2.5 will go right at the beginning, sort of like that. And that will be 2.1. It is showing me in the wrong order. However, what I can do is I can click on this, go to zoom and edit summary, and then just click on update and then it will put them in order. I did have 2.4 twice, but that is my own mistake when making this video. So that's how easy it is. It took me a while to figure that out, but that is pretty easy. You can edit the summary that way <laughs> to make it work. Zoom transition, that is just whether it animates from one to the other. If I take it off, then zoom transition will not work and it does that, uh, which I don't like. I like the transitions. I think they're pretty slick. So I tend to keep that option ticked just to remember what that looks like. It looks like this. So return to zoom is nice if you are using only PowerPoint, but in many of my presentations, I actually do this and then I press escape, do some editing, um, or I alt tab to another application and I will do something else in that application to demo something that's not just the slideshow on my screen. So if you do that and then you go back to your slideshow mode, unfortunately, you lose that feature of return to zoom. So I have a hack that I use to get around that, which is to take this section and to have a new slide and then just, let's make this a blank layout. 
and then just drag this into this, make it full screen. And then I'm going to cut this and I'm going to go at the end of every section and paste. And then I've effectively sort of replicated it. Shift F5 for slideshow mode. I run through my slides here, click, click, next slide, and then it does come back. Now this is actually an image of my zoom screen. So if I click here, wherever I click on the screen, it takes me there. And then I click a second time and it acts as my normal zoom. So click there, and then it takes me back here. Now I can click there and it will act as my normal zoom, which is, what I intend. So it is a little bit of a workaround as you need. So if you're worried about versioning and how it works with other ones, so this Microsoft website is very helpful. You can only create these in Microsoft PowerPoint 2019 or newer for Windows. With Mac, it allows you to play the Zoom but not create them. And with older versions right until PowerPoint 2007, it can play the Zoom as hyperlinks without the transition. PowerPoint for the web, unfortunately, it doesn't work. So another use case for this sort of thing. Firstly, I have dressed up my home slide with, this is a volunteer thing that I help run called Nerd Night Phnom Penh. And I, so I add these icons and these images. I have another video talking about how to get these icons. And I also just add these like this. And then what I do is I have this slide where I get people to upload the picture as need be, some headshots with the slide title, the name and the image. And then I have their actual slides. And then the last one is actually an image of the first one. So how I did that was just like before, I just dragged this into it and then I can add a zoom, so just a slide zoom that is going back into this slide. But I use another feature, which is I replace it with a special thing. So I can click on this zoom and I can change the image into, I'm going to do stock images here, for example. Love this feature in PowerPoint. So let's say we want this tiger. Now this tiger will be the one to take me back to it. So again, I will run through this, click on this slide, go through that person's thing. This is then the screen that I have on during the Q&A, right? So people can ask questions and still see that, but I can always click here to go back there. Uh, the other thing that I put in is I did have an image of the other slide. This is a zoom of the other thing. So just in case people forget to click on this, this is our logo, they can still go to the next slide and it is this, but they need a couple more clicks to get there like that. So it runs through the slides back to this person for Q and A and then loads it up there. I have preset my presentations. Uh, I have six presentations, so this can be very flexibly done to have anywhere from from one to six different headshots and it can go through. This is the logo that, of the venue that we use. This is maybe a drinks promotion. All sort of things like this can give you sort of a home screen so your audience can go between the event and see multiple slide presentations there. So that's it for this video. If you liked what you saw, then please feel free to click the subscribe button because I have lots more videos on Excel, PowerPoint, Google Sheets, Zoom, Teams, Microsoft Outlook, anything you name it, anything you're using in technology, uh, I have videos on how to do that. Thanks for watching.